Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here from Creative Frontiers and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create interactive buttons inside of InDesign. So the aim of this will be for an interactive presentation such as PDF, fixed layout, EPUB perhaps or even publish online. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some arrows to allow us to jump from one page to another. We'll also create rollovers for those as well so that when the cursor interacts with the same space on screen the appearance of those elements change. Everything here that has been built inside of InDesign, um, such as the boxes and the arrows and things like that. And so I'm going to take you through the process of how to turn those into buttons and add the interactivity. So I have here uh, an 11 page document. And uh, as always, the kind of navigation is best to put that onto a master page so that it appears on whichever document page you wish to. So mine's here at the upper right hand side of the screen, the up and the down arrow. And then there's a placeholder in there for the page number that you are currently on. So if I go to my master page where they're actually stored and double left click, here you can see if I pick up my zoom tool and then zoom into that region so you can get a good clear view of those. All those elements have been made inside of InDesign, switch to my selection tool, top of the tools panel. And here if I click on them, you can see that they're just lines drawn with either the pen tool or the line tool. Then of course the rectangle tool to make the boxes and they've had a red stroke applied to them. The box lower down has a placeholder in there. That's for a page number. So what will happen then is when you jump from each number page to another in the document, it'll tell you what page number that is. And that's a placeholder. So at the moment, because I'm on the B master page, it puts a B placeholder in here. Um, if you want to see how to create placeholder page numbers that update automatically, uh, I have a video and there's a link at the top of the screen to that now. Um, but for us, we need to focus on the buttons. Now, all of these are stored inside of a layer called interactive. So here you'll notice I have an interactive layer. If I left click on it and highlight it, I can turn those off and they're the only elements that are on the interactive layer in there. Now that can be quite handy, not least because sometimes you might have, um, for example, a busy layout and you can then lock everything out of the way or hide everything else. But also if you've got a document that is primarily intended for print and then maybe you want to add some interactivity to it, you can store all that interactive elements, the buttons and things like that in a layer of its own. You can then turn that into a print publication. And then perhaps if you wish to, you can then turn on your interactive layer and publish an interactive version for screen purposes as well. So that's the kind of habit I get into. And that's why the layers panel structured the way that it is. So if I show you by left clicking here, these lines are all separate. We need each of the elements that form a button to become a group. So it, it InDesign kind of treats them all as one element. So I'm going to need to be able to go up to my window menu, go down to interactive where all the, the majority of the panels for interactivity inside of InDesign are, and then I'll go across to buttons and forms. So that pops up on screen here and I'll move that to the side of my artwork. I then need to, with my selection tool active, click and drag across just those elements that make up the top arrow in there, which will be the previous page button. And with them all selected, I'll go to the object menu and then choose group. So that's now all one element. I'll do the same for the arrow that points down for the next page button that will be. They're all selected now. And again, go to object and then choose group. I'm going to go back to the top one up here, select that one. And then from the drop down menu in here, you can pick what you want that to become. I'd probably say it's probably the most efficient way. There is a button right down at the bottom of the buttons panel, which will allow you to convert artwork into a button. but you notice the top option there is button. So click on that. Now you'll see that we have um, further options in here that have sprung to life because now we can define this as buttoned artwork with rollovers and so on and so forth. So starting at the top up here where it reads name, you need to give everything a specific name in here in terms of your buttons. So that one here, I'm going to change that to previous page and press return. So that now has a specific name for that button. And then we need to add an action. So uh, in terms of what happens to trigger this, it will be uh, tapping with the with the finger on the screen or clicking with the mouse that will trigger the event to go to the previous page when it's viewed on screen. Now in the action, what actually happens, we need to add that in here. And we've got a whole bunch of options in terms of where you can navigate through the document that you're working in. Uh, in this case, I'm going to choose uh, go to previous page in here. So go to previous page and I've done that. Whichever page you're on when you're viewing this as a finalized interactive presentation, it will take you to the previous page. Lower down then we have zoom. So you can choose to what's called inherit zoom, which will stay at the same magnification. And then when you jump to a previous or a next page, in fact, 
it will keep the same zoom level and you'll get a, a similar kind of feel in terms of the magnification of where you were and when you've jumped to the next page it will look the same you could choose to uh, make it the actual size you could make the uh, page fit in window fit the width or fit visible well, i'm going to stick with inherit zoom and then um, lower down then we have appearance so when this interactive presentation opens up this is what that button will look like it will all be strokes in there um, they'll be red and um, but we need to have some way of indicating to the end user the viewer that you can hover over and you can do something with it because it's a button and it changes appearance so I'm going to left click on the rollover state and then whatever I do here to characterize this artwork will then become the rollover state appearance now I need to hover over this group now and double left click I'm going to select the rectangle in the background and then I need to choose and change the color in here so I'm going to go to the properties panel left click over here you could use the control panel to to get to a similar set of options but I'm going to change the fill here from none and I'm going to change that to light green in here so when someone's cursor is hovering over that then they'll know that it's got some interactivity press return and with that done I'm fairly happy you do have to left click back on normal because if you don't the button will load up on screen and it will look like it's rollover state so we need to technically reset the appearance of the button by left clicking back on normal you see there that's the appearance of normal I'm not going to bother with a clicked version in there it doesn't really serve any purpose uh, in this case but um, a normal a non uh, rollover and a rollover state in there is perfectly fine for what I need in here I don't want this hidden um, until it's triggered I want this to be visible on every page in here and you could add a description so um, Press return so click here to go to previous page and what will happen is when that person hovers their cursor over that icon the tooltip will pop up giving them that bit of information in there so fairly handy um printable if you did want to allow people to print this out um you could allow them to print it out it obviously in print it serves absolutely no purpose um so i arguably could turn that off in there i'm gonna leave it on i don't intend to create a printed version for this document um and then i'll click away I then need to repeat the same process so I'm going to click and drag across this one now the uh, the next page button is already been turned into a group so I can go to the drop down menu at the top choose button and then for this one type in next page uh, in terms of the event it'll be tap or release I'll click on the action list in here and then choose to go to next page I'll leave it set to inherit zoom I'll click on rollover and then I will have to double left click to get into the group again so I can select and modify just the rectangle don't want to apply any fills to the lines in there so that's why I'm double left clicking is to get to the uh, contents inside of that group again go to the fill icon change that to light green press return to make the pop-up disappear and then reset that button back to its normal state in there again for this one I'll type in something similar to the uh, previous page so click here to go to the next page and um, with that done um, we're ready to go and test it out now you can actually go to this icon here which is to preview a spread in what's called EPUB preview so if I click on that you get a very tiny window and then it'll remind you that you can't preview a master page of course so I will have to remember to go back to my pages panel go down to page one double left click to go on the top page and then in here you can go and click on play it will by default only load up the current page the view of the interactivity preview in here is very very small you might not see any of the buttons in there so you can go down to the bottom click and drag and make that bigger and then eventually you will see your buttons on screen if I hover over here you'll see that the preview shows me that the interactivity worked in there which is great but do not be surprised if those buttons do not take you to the previous or the next page because this preview by default will only preview one page it doesn't load up the whole document so you'd have to go down to the bottom right hand side and then choose to load the whole document so you can preview every page then you'll probably have to find you have to go back and click on play it loads the page up again and then we can choose to go and hover over and then left click it takes us to the next page hovering over here we can go to the previous page and you'll notice that the page number changes in there and so by putting that on the master page wherever this appears now these buttons inside of here will take to the previous and the next page of the document so there's a pretty neat way to be able to give someone simple navigation inside of InDesign and preview their document so 
I'm happy with that. There's a couple of things to be aware of with EPUB Interactivity Preview that if you want to preview page jumps in your document, you will have to choose to load up the entire document, not the page mode. And with that one done, then I will click on the X at the top to close that down. I'll go to the view menu at the top of the screen and then choose to fit page in window. And then I'm done with my buttons and forms panel. I'll close that down and we can then preview this online. So file menu, you can go down the list then and you can choose publish online from the list in here. Or in fact, if I come out of that menu, you can just go straight up to the top to publish online, which is uh, available at the top inside of InDesign. Now, when you click on that, it will start you on a kind of a wizard, a process really of an export process. We've got generally here for our options. Do we want to publish a new document? Yep. I'm going to publish a new document. I'm going to get rid of the numbering in there. It will take your document name for your InDesign file for your title for, for a default in there. So soil system there and then put the issue number in there. I could put a description in there as well. I'm not going to bore you with that. Um, uh, pages, I'm going to choose to export all pages. I want to export them as a single page, not spreads. This is just kind of intended to be on a tablet device or on screen. So single pages. Do I want to allow someone to be able to download this as a, pre a print PDF file as well? So what InDesign will do is it will create a higher quality print version of this file. Now, this is built for screen purposes. So I'm going to leave that turned off. I just want this uh, to be maintained as a screen presentation. I don't want to hide the share and embed options that will allow someone to be able to go and see this presentation and then share it with friends or colleagues and things like that. So I'm going to leave that turned off. And then I'll click on advanced inside of here. Then that will be the thumbnail. I could choose um, to change the thumbnail, a preview of this document in here. I could browse forward in here. I could choose a different page, but it will by default choose the first page. And I'm going to leave the options inside of there. So the resolution is set to a standard screen size of 96 pixels per inch. You could, if you wanted to, go to 144 PPI in there so you could account for higher screen quality um, devices. But I'm going to leave this in here just for the purpose of making this quicker to export on its standard 96 PPI. And then I'll click on publish. So then InDesign will then upload this document onto its own servers. And the beauty of this is that you then have your content stored online and um, all that the person needs when they're viewing your publication is a web browser. And Adobe tends to prefer at the moment Chrome for that, um, but um, it could be any web browser. Chrome's a recommended one. As you can see, I'm just filling in while the progress bar goes up there. So here we go. It's you can view your document. So if I click on view document, and so here we go. This is the document then shown in a browser in my version of Chrome in here. You can make this go full screen. So down at the bottom in here, you can choose full screen mode, and then it shows it on a uh, dark gray background. And then from here, you can see we can hover over the uh, buttons there for previous and next page, left click on them, and they will then jump from one page to another in there. So it works great. All the end user would need is a, is a web browser to be able to view that document and our interactive buttons work great inside of there. So that's how you create your buttons inside of InDesign, folks. Ideally, group your content together that you make inside of InDesign. You create a, a normal appearance, then create a rollover. Don't forget to reset the button back in there and put it back to normal mode. And then when you export, then you have your rollovers. Thank you for watching, folks. Um, as always, if you've enjoyed the video, then uh, please do give it a thumbs up. You can always subscribe to the channel and you can click on the alerts button so that every time I push a video out here onto the channel, you'll get notified. And until next time, farewell, friends.